In this week's lab, we're going to look at designing a stand to hold my crappy cell phone here. And built into the stand will be a sound amplification system. Now for this, you can download my crappy cell phone model off of Econostoga, or you can use your own if you like. This is just essentially real basic dumb solid, and the speaker is blue. So with the part open, the first thing I want to do is I want to put it into an assembly, which everybody should remember, but I'm going to make a few videos to remind you how to do all this. So you're going to select File, make assembly from part, select the inch part, or if you did yours in metric, work in metric, select OK, and click to place my crappy cell phone in the assembly. I'm just going to look at it isometrically and shade it with edges. So next I want to float this cell phone and reorient it. So I'm going to move over to the feature tree, right click on the part and select float. Now I'm going to add some mates. So I'm going to make the right assembly plane. I'll expand my phone, hold control, select the right plane on my phone and I'm going to add a coincidence mate. For the second mate, I'm going to select the front assembly plane Again, I'm going to hold control, select the front face of my phone. I'll release control, and I'm going to add an angle mate. And I'm going to make this 30 degrees. Now this has gone the wrong way, but I'm going to accept it. I'm going to come over to the mate group, expand it. I'm going to right click on the mate, and I'm going to tell it to flip the dimension. And that's how I want it set up. To fully fix this part, I want to add one more mate. I'm going to choose the top assembly plane. I'm going to zoom out a bit here and rotate around. And I'm going to mate this bottom edge to it. So I'm going to hold control, select that edge, release control, and add the coincidence mate. So if I look at it isometrically, I now have my phone made it the way I would like it. And I'm going to save this before I continue. In the next step, I want to make a see-through rectangle that represents the build volume for the printer I'm going to design this part for. So this part will be printed on the Uprint SE and it has a maximum build envelope of 8 by 6 by 6 inches. To represent that build envelope, I'm going to start a new part. Again, I'll make work an inch. Select OK. And I'm going to select my top plane until I want to create a sketch in this. Part. I'm going to sketch a simple rectangle. And I'm going to make its dimensions 8 by 6 inches. So I'll use mouse gestures to activate smart dimension. Select this. I'll make this side 8. I'll select this line. Click. And make this side 6. With my sketch fully defined, I'm going to right click and I'm going to exit the sketch. I'm just going to switch to the isometric view. And I want to create this part using surfaces. So in my ribbon, I don't have the surfaces turned on, so I'm going to hover over one of the tabs and right click, and I'm going to check beside surfaces, and then I'll select the surface ribbon. So first I'm going to create a planar surface using this sketch. So I want to create a planar surface, and I'm just going to select my sketch and right click to accept that. And again, I'm going to go back up here and choose shade it with edges. And now I want to use that sketch again to create an extruded surface. So I'm going to expand the surface in the feature tree, select my sketch, I'm going to select extrude surface, and I'll make the distance 6 inches. I'll accept this, and I'll fit the geometry to my screen. The last thing I want to do is close off this shape with another planar surface. So again, I'm going to activate planar surface, and I'm just going to select the edges of these surface close off my shape and I'll right click to accept that. Because I'm using surface modeling I'm going to knit all these surfaces together so I'll choose knit surface I'll just window select all of my surfaces make sure there's no gaps and I'll say OK. The next thing I want to do is I want to make this transparent. So I'm going to expand the surface body folder right click on the surface knit and I'm going to tell it to change transparency which will allow me to see through it at all times in the assembly and then I'm going to save this as bounding box. And now that I've saved it, I'm going to close the part and return to the assembly where I'll pick it up in the next video.